Hi everyone and welcome back to Chess for Charity. In this video, I'm going to show you a cool puzzle where it's white to play and win. So right now, this pawn on a2 is looking a little scary, right? Black is threatening checkmate in one move. So you have to find either a way to win the game or some way out of this very scary a2 disaster. So think about it, see what you can come up with. There's a lot of possible options. Some checks here, some checks here, some checks there. Maybe some threats, right? A lot of things you can do. So take a second, think about it. While you consider it, let me quickly ask you to subscribe if you have not yet already. Half of the income I earn in this channel goes directly to charity. So every like, every subscriber, it helps us out so much. And it also helps out charity. Okay, let's talk about the solution here. So there's this big threat on a2, right? That's the big thing. If you make a move trying to defend this square, like a very passive non-attacking move, like bishop takes b3, that's a terrible idea because this rook can just take this bishop. Remember, there's a pin here, which means this white pawn cannot capture the rook. That would be illegal. So generally speaking, you don't want to make a move that's kind of a nothing move. You want to do something that's active. Same idea goes for a3. A3 isn't really a blunder in the sense that you're going to lose the game on the spot. It's more like you threw away a winning advantage. So A3 is a bad move, but there's no crazy sequence there. So what is the answer? So the first move is knight E7 check. Wonderful. Now, if you didn't get that first move, I'd recommend you pause the video here. See if you can find the rest of the sequence. That's forced right here. Right? King h8 is forced. So maybe you can imagine this from here on out. What is the next sequence here? How does black lose the game? How does white win the game? So take a second. Think about it. One thought you might have is, hey, I can put this rook over here. And if black does nothing, like a nothing move, just to show it, then you can get this cool sequence of taking. And then they would take. And this is mate, right? Yeah, that's right, but remember, they're not going to make a nothing move. Instead, they're going to checkmate you on a2. So a move like rook h1 is a little too slow. right? Your moves have to generate power, threat. They need to be checks. They need to be aggressive because, again, checkmate in one is being threatened. So with that being said, look for checking moves. Look for forcing moves. You have two knights, a knight on e7, and the knight on f4. Which one do you want to put on g6 to check? I'll give you a hint. One of them wins, one of them loses. Okay, if you play knight e7 to g6, this is actually not the winning move. They can take you, and it looks pretty cool because you can play something like this, and if they go here, you can actually checkmate them, but this would be a blunder. I'll show that in just a second. That would be mate. However, if you, as white, make this knight move, black doesn't have to go here. Instead, they can approach the knight. That's the best move. Note that they could not take, just to make sure it's really clear, because this pawn was pinned when the king was here. And now there's no check because, well, there is a check, but you could just take, right? And black's fine. Black's totally fine here. Black's winning. Remember, this threat is still here, so... You got to make a move with check. You got to really generate some threats, and there's just simply not enough time for you. Okay. Plus, they have a queen. Let's go back. So, if you chose the knight on e7, that's incorrect. That's the point of that variation. It's possible for them to lose if they make the wrong move, but we're not going to talk about them making the wrong moves. So, that means the knight on f4 is the winning move. So, knight f4 check. Brilliant move. So they can take it in two different directions. That's awesome. If they take with the H pawn, it's a pretty obvious mate, right? <laughs> Not there, clearly. Knight just took here, and now rook on the H file delivers mate. This square is being held by the knight on e7. What if they take with the F pawn? Do you see the winning sequence now? Take a second here if you don't. What did this move just do? This just opened up a diagonal. How do we leverage that diagonal? How do we make use of this? Remember, they're still threatening mate in one. 
So you have to do something that's forceful, something that generates a check, something that's loud. Well, that move is knight takes g6 again, just more sacrificing pieces. They have to take. They can't move here because of this bishop. And now you gave up all these pieces. Rook, h1, mate. So that original position was a checkmate in four. Isn't that incredible? Really fast. Just look at it one more time. Mate is being threatened. You have two knights, a bishop, and a rook. And you just sack the house. Check. They move. You pick the right knight to check, which again is this knight on f. Check. Pick your way to take. You're going to lose. Doesn't matter which way. And then just sack the house. Look at that. Delivering checkmate on the h file with this bishop staring down at g8. Really cool pattern. Important checkmate pattern. If you don't know it, I recommend you do these kinds of problems. It really helps. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. If you enjoyed, be sure to like, subscribe, all that great stuff. Comment. Let me know how hard it was for you to solve. It's all great for me to read. And I'll try my best to respond. But that's so much. Thanks so much. Bye.